Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG HOA Ham. Tid Radio swung for the fences, the ball still in the air. We'll see if it gets out of the park. Wow, what a cool, tiny, full featured HT. We don't know how durable it's going to be. It feels like good quality. It has weight to it. It feels like a mini 878 that was shrunk down in size. It has that quality of weight and feel. It seems like it could be a winner, but it's still too soon to tell. I can promise you based on the feature set and it's low cost, there will be thousands of people picking this up. And so we'll know soon enough whether or not this thing has any major flaws beyond those which have been found so far. Spurious emissions is one of those flaws. And unfortunately, spurious emissions is not graded on a scale. It's not on a curve. It's either pass or fail. And even though it only missed it by this much in the testing that I've done, it's a fail. So I did receive one radio directly from TID. They sent it to me before introduction as a YouTuber asking me to do a review. I purchased one under my wife's maiden name and had it shipped to a business address, which TID Radio wouldn't know my wife's maiden name or that business address. That gave me the opportunity to review a radio just like any average ham radio operator would receive. That one also failed the spurious emissions test just by a little bit, but again, it's pass or fail. So I thought, you know what? TID Radio did an awesome job in putting so much into this radio. I was going to go the extra mile. I've purchased a third radio now that it's available for distribution via Amazon here in the US. It's here in a box. We're going to pull that out so you can see that it was first out of the box in your presence compared to the other two radios. We're going to put it on the tiny SA Ultra. We're going to find out for ourselves whether the third time is the charm or three strikes and you're out. Here we go. I hate unboxings. This is not an unboxing. It's a verification for you that I did indeed purchase a third radio in the US from Amazon. Here's the original radio that was sent to me. If you go and you watch my original review, you will see that I marked this. Oh my gosh, it's worn off. I marked it with a white dot. You can just barely see some residual and some white inside of here. This is the radio that was originally sent to me by TID. This is the radio that I picked up myself that was sent from China, pre-introduction here in the US and pre-availability on Amazon. And you've seen this in my review video. I mentioned in the review video that I was going to give TID Radio a third opportunity. And here it is. Let's get the third radio out. The most painless unboxing ever. I believe right now in the US it's only available in black. Otherwise I would have gotten another crystal one or maybe even a green one just so I could keep them separated real easily. So here is the third radio that we will be testing for spurious emissions. Here we go, radio number three. Let's get the Nano VNA out, get it all set up. I think I might even go through a complete recalibration just to demonstrate to you that indeed everything is above board. Here we go. My tiny SA Ultra was initialized and calibrated prior to the review of the TDH3. But since we're going to go the next step here and test a third radio as well as some other well-known radios. I thought, why not go through this again, just to verify for you that we do have a unit that is completely calibrated and giving us accurate readings. We should see very similar readings, if not exact, in this video as we did the prior video. It is kind of fun to watch this when it's sitting on your workbench in front of you, watching it on a computer screen, maybe not quite so fun, but it's happening quickly. And before we know it, we'll have the opportunity to calibrate it in the range in which we tend to operate our tiny SA Ultra. And that's what we're being asked to do right now, calibrate it to this range. Now it's gonna send signals from the top port down to the bottom port so that it calibrates itself in all the various tests that it can perform. I'll go ahead and speed it up to the end and we'll be tapping that screen to move on and start our tests momentarily. I'm zoomed in as tight as I can get so you can see everything that's happening on the screen of the Tiny SA. And I'm using my iPhone as a timer just so you can see I didn't stop this video and do any trickery with the testing that I'm performing here. It takes a couple of seconds for the Tiny SA Ultra to settle down once you key up. And by the way, all of these radios are being keyed up on the same frequency 
146.520 on high power. Now I'm just pausing the reading so I don't have to continue to hold down on the PTT button. This first radio, this is the one that came from TIT originally. The marker 2 is at 39.9 dBm. So it fails, and then it also fails against the requirement of negative 16.02. It was only negative 9.3. On radio number 2, this is the one that I purchased myself using my wife's maiden name and shipping to a business address because I just wanted to get a radio like any other ham radio operator would receive. Once we pause the reading here, we're going to see another fail. On the original requirement, it is 40 dB down from, uh, that's marker 2, will be 40 dB down. It's down 51.4, so we're good there. It passes, but it fails with only negative 14.7 versus the requirement of 16.02. So let's go on to that radio that I just picked up from Amazon. How did that radio do? I had high hopes. I was really wanting this to be the radio that passed the requirements so I could be operating completely legally. The others were marginal. I wanted this one to just knock it out of the park. Well, it knocked something out of the park, all right. And once we see things settle down here, I'm just happy to get rid of the menu. You're going to see that marker number two was only 26.2 dB down from the fundamental. So it fails there massively, and then it fails even more massively on requirement number two. We were a positive 6.4 versus the requirement of negative 16.02. Big fail. Okay, you can see all the radios were connected with uh, BNC connectors, so I could quickly take them on and off the tiny SA. But the readings on the first two radios, if you look back at my original review, I didn't use BNC connectors. It made absolutely no difference in the readings. It's still a fail to the same magnitude as it was originally. Let's key up on our Anytone 878. And let's see how many markers we have to determine if they pass or not on this particular radio. Well, all right, there's two markers left to compare to the fundamental, and those two markers disappeared because this is what a clean radio does. It's sending all the power at the main frequency or the fundamental. That's what we want to see with our radios. And by the way, this is a radio that's manufactured in China. Let's pull that Anytone 878 off and let's pull our FT uh, 3D onto the screen, get it connected via BNC and go ahead and key up. Here we go. All right, we had to wait for it to power on. I had all the radios powered off, by the way, as I was transmitting. Oh, nope, here's one. Forgot to turn that off. It might be connected to a dummy load, but it's still sending a signal out. So here we go with our FT3D. And let's see we are, where we are on our additional markers beyond the fundamental. And just like the 878, there are no markers. All our power is going to the fundamental. That's what a good radio looks like. Good gear deserves to be protected, so we're going to put that tiny SA Ultra face down in that rubberized coated protective watertight case. It's a Pelican case, and in go all the cables and connectors so nothing gets damaged, just waiting for the next test to be done. I'll leave links in the description below. Well, I was much happier before I opened up that box from Amazon and put that on the tiny SA Ultra. The unit that came from China directly to me as a YouTuber was just off a little bit, still a fail. The unit that I picked up, the crystal that I ordered directly under my wife's maiden name and had shipped to a business address, well, that one was close, but still a fail. The one that we just tested that came from Amazon here in the USA, not even close, a significant fail. So this gets packaged back up and heads to the Amazon return store tomorrow. TID Radio, I'm a minimalist. I love what you did with this radio. It is feature packed. Please get these spurious emissions fixed. For the rest of you, you're now informed. You have a choice to make. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.